got Tally from Network Connection Headquarters today with counselor Oscar Maldonado and Helen Maldonado, husband and wife team in Katy, Texas. Welcome, guys. Hey, Thank you. Thanks for having thanks us. For having Good afternoon. Us. I know everybody's busy in December, but we'll, we'll jump right in here. So just a little bit of history. Helen was probably member number three or four or five in the whole system nine years ago, representing a title company. And let's see if I remember right. Subsequent to that, you joined about four network and action groups. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, I kept teasing Helen and saying, you need to either run for the mayor of Katie or start a network and action group. And you finally did that. How many years later? Three years later. I can't believe I waited that long. <laughs> So you've had your franchise for four years. To celebrate four years. Four years. And here's the cool part. Oscar, I was teasing about Oscar is an attorney by trade. What type of law, Oscar? I do business law, commercial litigation, real estate law, and entertainment law. Awesome. So Oscar's doing law. And then on the side, their little side hustle <laughs> is the passion they have for music and entertainment. And they have a, a robust band. They have an incredible uh, uh, family, a Von Trapp family, I call them, uh, <laughs> guitar playing Harley and singing uh, Angelique. So they've got their hands full at nighttime. They're doing music and they've got a photo booth and all kinds of things going on. But uh, they're spending the majority of their time building a great group out in West Houston. And we're super happy about that. So congratulations on all your success. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Helen, you. you got to experience network in action firsthand. Tell us why you decided to jump in and buy a franchise. Oh, wow. Well, it was only because of him, because you finally said what you had said, like literally every month to me, you would say, are you, are you either going to run for the mayor of Katy or you're going to buy a franchise of NIA? And I would say, no, I didn't want more time away from my husband. Our children were getting ready to be empty nesters. Uh, I mean, go off to college. So we were going to be empty nesters. And when you said it the, that one time in front of Oscar, Oscar said, send me the docs. Let's look at it. He looked at it and he goes, Helen, why aren't we doing this? This is exactly your rock star thing. You and, and then I remember he tore my doc to shred like any good attorney. <laughs> I looked it over a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Went over with a fine tooth comb like no one has before Oscar or after. Nothing that you wouldn't expect from someone with your pedigree. So that's, that was the right thing to do. So, okay, so you got your group started uh, and obviously you got your entertainment business and then a few years later, Oscar, you sort of got the bug and and uh, got a lot more involved, didn't you? Uh, well, I, actually, I got involved from the beginning. I, I really once uh, once I saw this and, I, you know, I, like like what she was saying, she's been doing this for a long, long, long time. And when I saw it and I saw the model, I said, wow, this is this is what you do naturally. You're a rock star at this. Uh, let me come along <laughs> for the ride and, and we'll go for it. And, and yeah, and, and just jumped in with both feet and. That's and awesome. Makes sense. That's awesome. So, um, you guys, of, of all of our franchises, you know, everyone does a community service project, but I know that no one has done it with more passion than you all. So, we're going to get into that a little bit later, but I know that's part of your why, but start to tell us, you know, a little bit about your why, because it resonates with your members and with your groups. It, it really does. Our why really is that we get the pleasure of working together, bringing our expertise, which are a little bit different to our members. Um, you know, every franchise owner out there has their different special techniques and background that they bring to the table. Um, we just bring something a little bit different. My background is all sales, marketing, and business development. And of course, Oscar's an attorney. So our members really get the best of the best of us and then and then some yeah we are constantly thinking of ways that we can help them grow uh and drive business to them so we're doing everything to to focus on that so you had a big background with bni i mean you were in uh, several groups over the years and were very involved and know that organization intimately of the six dramatic differences that we talk about what one or two do you think make the biggest difference to a business owner with network in action versus traditional networking? 
You want to answer that? No, I guess uh, well, that's directed see, that's... at me because I've got the the other three <laughs> letter wheelhouse. Yeah, <laughs> the other three <laughs> letter um, business out there. Um, I actually guess it's all six of them. I, I there's nothing that stands out um, as the only thing. All six of those differences made a huge difference to me as a member. So when I got into this, or when you told me about it, I, of course it was still in development. But I, I told you, this is brilliant. And it's the best way to grow a business is through networking. But you took away all the pains that I was feeling in the other networking organizations that I was in. Meaning like weekly meetings and less than stellar leadership and a group maybe you don't really want to network with. Well, I for me, the thing that bothered me the most about BNI was it... Uh, it was run by volunteers. You know, they became my friends, yes, but they didn't have a vested interest in the success other than the pride of, of having a good, strong group. And I'm still friends with a lot of those people, and I still think they're a great organization. They just don't have what we have. And those six differences are, are key. You know, the fact that we only meet once a month for our membership, we actually do, we're a little extra, so we do a lot of other things yeah. for our membership, but the requirement of once a month is, is amazing. The, the fact that we do a background check on our members, I think that's important. I got stung personally as a member of the other networking group with someone that was less than stellar, I'll just say. And I like that we interview every member. We vet everybody, not only the criminal background check, but we interview them and we don't invite everybody we interview. I, you know, that's one thing our members like is that they know if we have a new member in our group, we have vetted them. Yep. And they can yep. refer them with confidence because of that. The ice on the cake, I guess, is the ROR, return on relationships that we offer, that guarantee, nobody has. Nobody has that. And that's a that's really the icing on the cake or the cherry on top, I guess I would say. I think you're being a little humble because I do think the biggest difference in a Katie or West Houston Fulcher group is the leadership. And obviously anyone watching this can see that between the two of you, you have an innate ability to go out and attract the kind of people that business owners would want to network with. And that doesn't always happen in a volunteer led group. Let's be honest. It, it yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Um, why you. is networking important to a business owner? So go take yourself back to the title business. Okay. Uh, talk about the success you had networking and how you grew those businesses. Everything I've ever done is about networking and building relationships and I've been in sales marketing and business development my whole life, not just for title, but everything I've ever done, it's about building those relationships. And the best part about building relationships is growing somebody else. If you grow somebody else, it's going to come back to you tenfold. Yeah. It is. And I've, I have always done that, you know, in whatever I sold, whatever, you know, business I was represented. I would sell from the other side of the desk and, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to make this happen? I, I was in advertising for years, helping them come up with campaigns for their business growth. You know, I always said, I said, take away my commission. It's not about my commission. It's really about your business and how that, that can grow. That, that's that mentality that I've always had and networking has just helped me be able to do that even more with you know it's i like to say it's the one marketing expense that keeps on giving meaning if you're doing page one place in a google and you cut off the credit card that benefit goes away forever awesome. or if i build a relationship with oscar malinato 10 years from now if a person needs xyz and i'm the xyz oscar's going to refer me because of our relationship so yeah very valuable um tell me you've got lots of them Lots of them, but tell me about one of the members' success stories in one of your NIA groups. Oh my gosh, that's God. hard to narrow it down to one. We were talking. You can each tell one if you want. <laughs> Do what? Uh, maybe each of you tell one. Okay. There are so many. I mean, it, it runs the gamut from members that have joined 
and within the first month made like 17 times their ROI um, just in the first month of joining the group to something as simple as we had a member a while back uh, who her husband uh, got tongue who was cancer, also a member who's, who, who was also a member and got tongue person. cancer and they uh-huh. went and they were going to the hospitals and all and, and they had some really uh, mediocre well really crappy insurance actually and they told them at the hospital and they um so they were in in desperate uh shape at that point and went to one of our other members who sold health health insurance and he was able to turn them on to a cadillac plan to where they went back to the hospital they got i think pretty much everything covered yeah and they were able to deal with that wow. i mean life-changing it's not always about business is it not always it's about not business. always about business yeah. but yeah. We've had several that, like Oscar said, have gotten, you know, 10, 15, 20 times their ROI in a very short period of time. We had one that got it before he actually came to his first meeting. And, you know, he came and, and, yeah. and signed up right away. But before he came as a member, he had already made some connections and and made that work for him. But he's not the only one. There's so many more of those stories. We had a brand new member, what, in October, November, to October, signed up and she's already singing our praises because of the ROI that she got. But again, it's not about the ROI, it's about the relationships about the relationship, and the, the camaraderie that happens within our group, uh, whether it's collaborating together um, to, to market together, to do events together, that's happening every day in our groups. And I love that. Yeah, uh, it puts a it puts a real end to those comments we used to hear, remember Helen, years ago, where people would say, you can't network once a month and make it work. And I have the same stories where before somebody even gets really sort of efficient at their first meeting, they're already getting referrals. I think what happens, and weigh in on this, but you know, in the old adage of when you join a networking group and you get to know, like, and trust, I think what happens with network in action is because you're the membership committee and because the group trusts and likes and knows you, when you bring in someone, it's just transferred almost automatically. Exactly. Yeah. And it's it's completely different than what other people experience all around the world networking. What would you say to someone who was uh, looking at getting into a franchise business and they're looking at all these 4,300 options? What would you say about this one? Why don't you take that one? Because on the legal side, she's. <laughs> oh my God. I'll tell them, just do it. Just do it. Because you look at all these other franchises and uh, I mean, the, this one is so easy and it's so lucrative and it's so, uh, I mean, the, the, the plan you've laid out is just, is just so simple. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, cause I, when, when we first bought into it, I was looking at, I wasn't looking to get into any franchises, but I would look at other franchises. Like we'd go sit at a, at a uh, Freddy's hamburgers or whatever, and you look at, at their model and, and they've got to buy a, a physical bill or at least a physical building um, and make it all look exactly like all the other franchises. They, like you say, they got to do the waffle fries or whatever. And it, that's such an, and then they got to manage a bunch of 16 year olds and hope they show up <laughs> for a whole lot less money than the average network and action franchise owners make it. Yeah. It's, it's right. crazy. It's insane. insane. It's insane. Uh, I want to ask you each to answer this on a scale of one to 10, uh, the amount of money that you've invested in your franchise, how do, how does your financial picture rate today and your future on a scale of one to 10 with network in action? I say a 10. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> one to 10. Yeah, absolutely. All right. How about now that this is the wrong question to ask you guys because you are such workaholics and I don't think it's really work to you. I think you people see it on this screen. Y'all love the music business when you're playing, you know, your band and singing and working with your daughters. It's like that you got to be in heaven. That doesn't feel like work. Right. But yeah. on a scale of one to 10, in terms of your ability to control your schedule, what does your network and action franchise give you for that? 10. Absolutely. A 10. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything well, we do. And, and mind you, Scott, we still run other businesses. This is just our number one. At the top of the triangle, everything we do comes back to NIA and, and works with in, in conjunction with what we do in NIA. Yeah. It helps grow all of everything else we do. So our marketing for those other businesses isn't really a job or a yeah, chore. Yeah. Yeah. It's done for us. With so, us. so last one on a scale of one to 10. 
in terms of your other businesses or other businesses you know of or been a part of maybe with a title company or the legal practice, how does this rate in terms of how you put your head on the pillow at night and feel about what you're giving back to the world on a one to 10? You want to start? I, I'll take that because it, it gives us so much pleasure. Every year, this time of year, in, in our, well, last month, we always do our gratitude meeting. And we ask everybody in the group to share what they're most grateful for. And what we're most grateful for really is this business and our members and what they, what they bring to us, the, the successes that they have. I mean, we're like proud parents, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 feel, sometimes I feel guilty yeah, charging right. them. You know, I feel guilty charging my members. They're my best friends, you know? Right. I know. Right. You know, but it, it is, and they, they love what we're doing. And so that makes it even easier. Um, even, even our kiddos have taken part and learned and grown, you know, the hardest thing for a parent is to teach your kiddo because they won't listen, especially teenagers and above. They know, that age, yeah. But what they have learned and, and shared with us that they've learned from it has been amazing. And, you know, and now that they're adults and, and entrepreneurs, we've raised them to be entrepreneurs. So having them be a part of NIA has really been so valuable to us to see their growth as well. It's, it's amazing. And I've got to tell you, I've got to answer that from an attorney's perspective too, because yeah. uh, as, as we all know, the practice of law is very stressful and it, it's something that can keep you up. And, and it's, uh, you know, and I've had a very successful law practice, but you still go to bed at night thinking about all your cases and, and thinking about what you got to do and the deadlines and all that sort of stuff. So, and from a, that perspective, I got to say this business it's so great because I can put my head down at night with this business. And, you know, I, I know that everything's cool and everything's good. Everything's positive. Everything's moving in a forward direction. And I don't have to think about all those things constantly. And, and I'm actually, I don't know if I've told you this, but I'm actually, I'm still going to practice law, but I'm actually retiring from my litigation practice. I've decided that I really want to focus more of my efforts on this and wow. less on being a slave to the docket of the court. Because litigation is very taxing that way, and um, but I'm still going to practice law. I'm still going to do contracts yeah. and that sort of thing. But that's incredible. But yeah, but litigation, I'm I'm retiring from. I'm, I've got two cases left that I'm trying to get out of my <laughs> my docket. Get off your doc. Get off your docket and be done. Right. That's interesting. If, Wait, if, if we can help other people ahead of the game, especially on the legal side, then they won't have to have yeah. litigation. Yeah. Yeah, like that's, that's one of the things I, I've learned. And, and actually, when we're doing this grat, uh, gratitude exercise, I told everybody, you know, from from my perspective, what I love about this business is that now I get to use my expertise to help people on the front end and help them uh, avoid litigation instead of getting paid on the back end. to take. Yeah, that. you're almost like a business marriage counselor in a way. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. I think anyone that's watching this clearly sees with even without the the verbiage, you know, what, what this means to y'all and why you're so successful because you're living your, you know, your, your mission, you're in, you're in mission. It's clear to see what, if you, if you could answer this last question, what would you do different if, if anything, and maybe, maybe there's not anything, but if you look back on your franchise, you know, your journey, uh, would you do anything different other than start earlier? <laughs> that was going to say start earlier. <laughs> that was going to be the answer. <laughs> that was the answer. I, I think yeah. it took me three years or almost three years. I can't believe it took me that long. To, to say yes, I mean that's that was just silly. I know. You know I think it's, I think it's a testament. I think it's a testament to your loyalty because I remember how loyal you were to that title company and how and how I was convinced they were the best title company in the world because they must have been because you were so happy with them and things happened along the way that that led you on a different journey and and uh, everything happens for a reason, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Well, this has been great. Market for a title. Sure. One escrow team, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I mean, when you think about all the things you have going on, you know, you still have your title position where you can uh, create some income. The average millionaire has four streams of income and you create some income uh, by helping with titles and you got your network in action and you got your, your uh, entertainment business. It's crazy. And the law firm. Well, you know, Scott, speaking of that, what I would tell anybody that's interested in buying a franchise, especially if they've got other businesses is, how how better to promote your business than to get paid for doing networking 
because because our networking group fits in with everything we do and it helps us promote my law practice helps us promote yeah. uh, the entertainment business helps us promote the title business and it's not like it's not like it's really taking that much more away from us than if we were doing networking anyway right so yes it's, it, it's yeah. a no-brainer you know you get paid to do what you what you need to be doing anyway to grow to grow your businesses beautiful great way to end it at the very beginning, you did want to talk on the uh, charities. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. So uh, every group, obviously, you guys know better than anyone. Every group in America, South America now does something charitable once a year in their community. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, y'all have done something for a number of years, multiple things. I mean, y'all been wrapping packages in malls and all, you know, helped. Oh, I love the uh, Child Proof America, right? Was that the name of the organization that helps with kids that have been uh, uh, trafficked. I mean, unbelievable, the stories. But uh, talk a little bit about that from this perspective. First, what has it meant to your members? Wow, the camaraderie that happens. And we, we, we actually interviewed three companies, three charities. We asked for nominations and uh, from our members, and we have three, we narrow it down to three that come and present to all of our groups in one month. And then the next, the following month, when they're not there, we vote. And every time it's been unanimous of which wow. charity that we will get behind. And every time it's something a little bit different, you know, because of our entertainment side, a lot of times it is to host an event to get their name out to, you know, get the awareness out for that organization. But um, our very first one was uh, Sunshine Through the Rain, which was a charity that helps support children who have lost one or both parents to death. That was founded by um, Joanne Rodriguez, who lost her sister and her sister left four children. So her nieces and nephews she was like, we got to do something. I know this is not the only children that are without their parents. Yeah. And get those people, those children together with other children that have felt that same hurt, because they go back to school after the funeral and kids don't know how to talk to them. They don't. Sure. It's just a different experience. And having experienced losing my mother, uh, I was 20. I can't imagine if I was 10. Right what I would have gone through. So we got behind that charity and we helped raft uh, gifts in the mall for uh, two weeks leading up to Christmas. Matter of fact, they still let us know when they need help and we still send volunteers. Uh, members of ours have volunteered, donated money, um, everything. So and it's safe to say that it's another one of those times where we're trying to give away something and we end up getting more back in return. I'm sure besides the camaraderie, the connection, it's probably helped your retention. I mean, who leaves an organization like that? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And the fact that that you allow us to gift a member a membership to a charity. So we have um charities in, in each of our groups, but we yeah. also and then we have a charity of the year that is voted on by the members. Our charities that are charity members dig in and they're amazing. They come to the meetings, they get to know the members. And they actually, I think, get more out of it than anybody. Yeah. Relationships and the fact that it's not just the members and their reach and what they can do, but it's the companies that they know, the vendors that they have, all of the, and friends and family members of those people. And it's like casting your net a thousand times wider than you'd ever dream as a, as a charity. Yeah, um, I agree. You know, people don't realize unless you're a big you know, United Way charity, you have a lot of needs yeah. and you know, they need the bookkeeper and the CPA and the social media and the video. And so they, they really are great members of network groups. Absolutely. Really and Child Proof America was awesome this past year and, and we're looking forward to selecting the new one. And y'all do the charity thing better than anyone. I, I appreciate that. But uh, it's just, you know, it's like I said, I don't think people even need to listen to this recording. They can just see it in, in y'all's faces and your enthusiasm and and joy that you're getting out of, uh, you know, living your best life. And at the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? So thank y'all so much for spending some time sharing that with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you're you. Welcome.